frontline healthcare workers have always stepped up, but during this unprecedented global pandemic, we've all been privy to acts of true heroism and countless moments of empathetic humanity. Norton healthcare nurse Penny Manning is the epitome of selflessness and dedication and stepped up in a way that has garnered admiration and accolades from her colleagues, patients, the community, and beyond. Penny, in your own words, can you tell your story? Um, it was just a normal day. Um, I'm actually, I was training with another nurse that, that she was pretty much giving me the run because I've been a nurse for many years um, because I had transferred to Audubon from Women and Children's that I had taken a, a leave of absence for three years to recover from back surgery. And in that three years, I actually fostered and rescued cats and dogs. But when I went back to work as a nurse, um, I quit fostering and rescue, and I just kept my foster tail, which is four cats and two dogs. But that day, I was um, taking care of this patient, um, walked in, and my normal day consisted of just making idle conversation with the patients, um, trying to get a feel for what their home life is like, um, what their day-to-day -day living is all about. And I was talking to this gentleman who was terminal care, um, and was there for a completely different reason, but I asked him about his family, and he told me he didn't have any family, and I asked him if he had any friends that lived near him, and he said he didn't have any friends, and he said all he had was um, his dog named Duke, and uh, he said that the dog was left in his apartment, and he had to come to the hospital, and he needed to find somebody to take care of Duke, and I said, is there anybody at all that I could that I can call. And he said, no, I don't have anybody. He said, can you take care of my dog? And I said, well, I'm your nurse, so I don't think that's allowed, but um, let me make some phone calls and see if I can find somebody to help you with Duke. So I proceeded to talk to the social worker, care managers, and we started making phone calls and all the phone calls um, came to a dead end. Um, I called some people that I knew from when I had rescued um, while I was off, and everybody that could potentially take Duke was actually full. So it came down to our hands were tied, and I called home and uh, told my boyfriend, I'm like, I don't know what to do. There's this dog. He's stuck in the apartment. He's been there for over two days, and he has nobody to get him. Um, I need to help this dog. And he says, we've got to help this dog. So he said, ask the little fellow if it's okay if I go get the dog. So I did. And the man gave us his keys, gave us his permission. He went and got the dog. He brought the dog to the hospital so I could see the dog. Um, gave me the fellow's keys back. I took the keys back and I showed him pictures of the dog. And I said, okay, your dog's safe. He's at my house and I'll keep him for as long as I need to keep him. Um, whenever you get out of here, I'll bring him to you. Um, his biggest worry was somebody would get Duke and not get him back. Right. And I said, trust me, I don't want to keep your dog. I have two of my own and I have a few cats. I said, you can have your dog back. Um, Penny, tell me this. Once he knew that you and your boyfriend, I mean, you had Duke in your possession. I mean, what did that gentleman's face look like? You could actually see the relief um, that his dog wasn't there and it was actually going to be taken care of. So the relief was just apparent on his face. And when I showed him pictures of the dog and how he was at my house, that I wasn't kidding. I really did have his dog. He was like, oh, yay. <laughs> so um, I found out that he did have family, but they are um, many miles away, um, further out in the state. And I notified them that I had the dog. Um, the patient ended up having to go to a rehab facility um, and I've talked to his Gilded Club representative or advocate, and she knows I have the dog. Um, and we keep in contact. She lets me know how he's doing. I try to get him pictures so that they know he's doing good. Um, little fella had to actually have emergency dental surgery the other day, so I let him know what the costs were, but they aren't sure if they can actually um, reimburse me for it or not, which is it, it's fine. But... Um, just want to make sure he's taken care of and in great health. And if he can be reunited with his owner, then at least he'll, he'll get a healthy dog back rather than, you know, a sick one. Or For sure. He'll get a healthy, happy dog back. 
what happens in and hate to think of a worst case scenario but i mean there's a silver lining in all of this but what happens if for some reason duke's original owner is no longer able to care for him we discussed that and we decided because i've had a lot of calls um, a lot of people on facebook messaging me um i don't want to put duke through any other um I don't even know how to describe it, upheavals in his life. Um, he had a big enough adjustment getting used to us, and he's actually come out of his shell. He's doing great. So if anything happens to his owner, um, Duke's going to stay with me. Now, how has Duke been adjusting? Because I have to be honest, when you say he's come out of his shell, I like that shell. It seems very, very chill. Of course, he's yeah. what partially deaf and blind. He is completely deaf and partially blind. Um, he has some arthritis issues in his hips. Um, when he came here, we finally got him to trust us enough to let us open his mouth. And it turned out that he had multiple abscesses in his mouth that had been there for a long time. So I wanted to make sure he was taken care of and not in pain. So my vet um, took him in as an emergency case, did an extraction of nine teeth. He's on antibiotics and pain medicine right now. So, um, but coming out of the show, when he first got here, um, he would shirk back from you when you try to pet him. Um, and like he didn't really trust people. And now when I walk in the door, he jumps, he's excited, he bounces. Um, if you get out of his sight, he barks and whines. <laughs> so, and he also looks very at home in your arms. That's for sure. He does. He loves to be loved. Now, Penny, I know that you were awarded um, by your colleagues and hospital leadership at Norton the Good Henry Award, which I love is an honor named after Norton Audubon's full-time facility dog, for ob your obvious kindness in such a really difficult, really difficult time. There are people, I mean, as, as I said, our frontline healthcare workers and a variety of other workers in other industries have really stepped up and in ways mm -hmm. that are tremendous. You put your lives on the line for us, and every single one of you is certainly a hero. But this is going above and beyond in a way that it, this would be a little unprecedented. And there are a lot of people who think that you are truly truly a hero. And someone I'd like to introduce into the conversation here is Brandon Dixon, CEO of Feeder Supply, who is very aware of what it is that you've done. And I'd love for Brandon to express how Feeder Supply feels about your actions. Well, Penny, I will tell you, you were the uh, the talk of the office for for a while when the the the, the, the news uh, came out. We were we have a big passion for pets here, and uh, everybody was kind of talking about the fact that you know not only during all of everything going on with the with the, the COVID crisis and and you helping out everybody in the hospital, you're taking on a dog and and helping out an owner that uh, has a passion for his pets, and, and we know pets are family. Uh, so you were a big conversation in the office, and, and you know we want to definitely appreciate you and thank you for for taking on Duke. He, he's a, a handful, it looks like there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but along with that, we, we we know that there's a lot of responsibility that goes along with that, but there's also a lot of financial uh, piece that, that goes along with taking care of a dog. And we wanted to kind of help out and, and see what we could do. And we partnered with uh, one of our amazing suppliers, Nutrisource, that's uh, going to provide uh, dog food uh, for for Duke for the next year. Uh, oh, wow. Why? Uh, the also also is uh, we've got these Incredipet pet treats that we carry in our stores. They're private label. He obviously likes his treats by the way he looks there. Uh, so we're gonna provide one year supply of treats for, of Incredipet treats uh, and then a $250, $250 gift card to anything you need at, at a feeder store for bed, leashes, whatever you need for, for Duke so that uh, you can take care of Duke and uh, and continue to, to have some fun with him and maybe he'll make it back to his owner and, and, and be happy. But, um, and uh, other than that, he looks pretty content and happy with you there. Thank you so much, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> Well, you're you're an inspiration to all of us, and you know it was it was a, a big topic in the office, and uh, and we love what you not only what you're doing for the community as a healthcare worker, but what you're doing for Duke and his owner, and and we want to thank you very much for that. Thank you so much.
Well, on behalf of everybody at WHS 11's Great Day Live, I want to thank both of you. By the way, Brandon, Feeder Supply, I think, is my second home. I love, though, what you all do for the community in terms of rescue and adoption, in addition to just being a locally owned business that cares about your community and is the best place to shop if you have pets, that's for sure. And Penny, like you just said, feeders didn't have to do that. Well, neither did you. And what a tremendous, tremendous thing that you've done. So thanks to both of you and thank you for taking the time to join us on Great Day Live.